Hey, Luis, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Exciting times at remote.com at the moment. I've just seen you write, raise 150 million Series A, a Series B, Series C? Series B, Series B, Series B. Yeah, so, so what's happening over there? Like, how's it going? Hello, uh, thanks for having me on your podcast. Uh, very good initiative, by the way. So it's been exciting, exciting times. We announced our Series B last week and it is, it is exploding. So a lot of interest in our platform, new customers, new businesses. And of course, uh, we need to be aligned on, on the way that we want to scale from this point on because all eyes are on us. We have our investors, so the pressure is on. So that's uh, remote. It's the place to be, I guess. It sounds like very exciting times. Just to give people a bit more context, what's the, your sort of team made up of and what's your role in the company and things? So I've been on the, on the customer experience slash support uh, operations for a couple of years, almost 20. The remote currently is on an hyper growth stage. So we, we have our customer experience team that basically supports from end to end all of the customers. So our employees, the employers and the contractors. So the customer experience team is divided in two. So it's the customer success management. Team. They are more focused with the growth across cross sales, upsells, expansion, uh, and all the escalations uh, complaints on a day-to-day basis. And they own the relationship since the day of, of the SLA is signed, when the end-off is made by the sales representative, the account executive, and they, they follow it through. And they are becoming a very part of the organization because they are representing the face of the company. So for the customers, they are the face of remote. That's for, very important. In one of our biggest chunk of revenue, it's actually existing business, which it's a very good sign that we are doing a fantastic job. And the second part of the team, it's the user happiness uh, team, that it's more support oriented. So we have we have segmentation in our accounts. So they, they deal with the, the lower budget accounts, if you will. And they support everything from, from A to Z on those accounts. They support internal stakeholders and they give support to the CSMs as well. So we sometimes we are the first filter. Sometimes we are the only filter. Sometimes we are the last filter. But we are always in the mix. We are really on the backbone, on the higher the high of the hurricane on the company. And right now, especially with the, with the Series B announcement that will scale immensely, it's already scaling. Yeah. So exciting times uh, for everyone, I guess. So your customer acquisition is about to grow very quickly. And- yeah, it's just, it, it, is, it is already already exploding. We, we were in a good place even before the, the Series B announcement. And now we are preparing for a very strong end of the year, end of summer, beginning of, of Q4 will be will be probably very interesting to see how far we can go. But we need to be prepared. And now that's why we are scaling to be yeah. prepared. So what is your current mission in the scaling? Currently and, and, and personally as, as head of, of customer experience, I need to be aligned. So we need to be aligned internally to understand what are the, the plans of the growth department, what are the plans of the sales department, and be, and be aligned. And then have a decent forecast based on data, of course. Mm-hmm. and understand what current roles you have on the vertical, what, can, what future roles you should have on the vertical, and have uh, even closer alignment with our people up team, so with the recruitment with the recruitment team. As we spoke before, this should be your best friends, and you, ne- you need to have those conversations. So they have their goals, their targets of recruitment, and I need people to, to land and expand my, my team and provide a, the best custom support and customer experience to our customers. So... After the alignment internal with growth, sales, with products, you have to have that conversations with, uh, with the recruitment team, be there on top of everything. And then from that point on, project the plan in terms of timelines, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, um, and uh, work with them head to head, screening CVs, whatever is needed. So they understand that we are here for each other. That's very key and very important. It's working perfectly, not now at remote, even before the Series V, we already kick off the, the recruitment effort and it's working very, very well. But yeah. the, key, the, the key is to actually uh, to make that bridge internally. Yeah. How many people are you, are you going to hire and in what time frame do you need to do it by? So just a little of a background of the growth that I actually saw with my eyes. So when I started uh, in March, uh, we were 140 globally. Now we are 330 more or less. The team, moved. when I arrived, we were 10. We are already 20. And we are planning on growing up to 80 until the end of the, the year slash beginning of the first quarter of 2022. Okay. So it's, a, it's an impressive growth. But then again, we need, we need to be prepared. That's, that's where we want to be. We need to reach the point where even before the customer thinks about the problem, you already answer the question. But for that, we need a better organization and more firepower. I think yeah. that's key. 
you're, you're going to find that you're going to see a lot more of new faces, I guess, on Zoom. <laughs> yes, so, yes, it's 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 already part of my daily weekly routine. Um, yeah, an average of seven, eight, nine, ten interviews a week. But that's very important. We, we talk about culture and talk, we talk about being a remote leasing company and about our DNA and our values. I'm 100% sure that it's important to have actually the, the manager conveying that uh, message since day one. And for me, day one, it's on the interview. That's where the onboarding experience starts. So they are hearing from myself, from my mouth, where is the project? What is the team? What are the plans? What are the plans of expansion? Our values, transparency, kindness, excellence. And with that, I'm, I'm actually validating if they are uh, a fit in terms of uh, what we need, what we want. And they are very appreciated. We, we receive emails saying, you know what, I love to have uh, this chat because you answer all my questions if, even before I made them. So it's very clear that I want to be part of, of the project. And that's very good, good to read. And it's very good feedback. Do you, do you feel like under pressure, say you have to hire 60 people in, a, in the next few months? Do you feel under pressure? Like, how do you maintain the quality in that environment of the people you hired you, and you feel like I need to fill that spot immediately, but you don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, very, 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 very good question. So one of the keys that I already uh, alluded to that is to work very in tandem with, with, with the recruitment uh, team. So they already know the profile of, of people that I want to, to hire. Hmm. Uh, what, what are the correct fits? When the screening process starts, they already know that even if technically that person is a possible fit, the, the type of personality, the type of profile will not fit in our team. That's the first. Second, use your uh, your network as much, as much and best as you can immediately um, because you, 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 you never know, especially on, on customer experience and, and, and support roles. It's not mandatory that you have a background or a more technical background. You just have the will to learn um, because anyone can be thought, but you have to have the drive, the right mentality. And for me, the most important thing to have that customer centricity mentality that uh, you know what, you need to be customer obsessed and you're going to be a, a good fit. And we, we provide that, that message or we convey that message since the day one, which is the interview. Other than that, there's uh, internal, internal programs that we have, like, which is normal referral programs, um, internally that, that work very well. And word of mouth works fantastically because we are branding our own, our own company by saying what we do and doing what we say. Mm -hmm. So it's important for our brand, for our, for our image, that we actually provide a very good onboarding experience to our, to our employees. And that is convenient to, to other networks that we don't know about. And when it's time to recruit, you know what? I'm going to refer remote to a close friend of mine because my experience has been fantastic. And that's, that's very good because at, at, at the end of the day, you will trust people that you have a close relationship with and you will never, normally you will never refer a company or a job position if you think that the person will underperform or be miserable at their job. So yeah, because it reflects badly on you either way. It reflects badly on you. And I, and I already saw this, this happen. Some relationships are over because because of that, where there's a misalignment between what actually the person is, and because of that, relationships and friendships are over because that's not that's not cool. So you need to be careful. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. And um, do you have any tips for when you're interviewing someone to find out? You know, because everyone puts on their face, their interview face, and they're their best. Sure, sure. Do you have any tips for or questions that you ask to like really find out who someone is? Well, I, 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 I think I, I disarmed them um, with, with my sincerity and honesty, which is basically one of our values, which is transparency. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a no, no BS approach where by explaining what remote is, uh, at the same time, I validating actually if that person is a fit or not and let them speak, speak about their experience, what are their goals and examples of on these specific uh, positions. What, it, what represents for them to be customer obsessed? Please show me two, two or three examples and practical, practical scenarios. I do two or three questions about the practical scenarios, but basically it's, it's about uh, understanding the trajectory of that, of that person, if it is a fit or not, if everything on a professional level, it's a, fi a fit or not. And uh, you need to have empathy. That's one of the most uh, important things. Yeah. Uh, you need to have that, that, that chemistry because of the end of the day, it will work, work for me. I'll be the face of the company. So for them, as the customer success and user experience team are the face of remote, 
And that's very important. And it's and I'm not even talking about the cases where we actually send an offer and that person will become a remote employee. Even if they don't reach an agreement with us and there is no offer, it's always a good experience. And maybe you don't know if they will refer remote to someone else. That's very important to keep to keep in mind when you are interviewing someone, you don't know who that person is. You don't know again, we talk about the networks before. You don't know if that person has a good network. If he or she can refer a good person, uh, or you know what, I, I think I'm not a fit, but this position is perfect for you and, and and there you go referral we have a new candidate yeah. so it's uh, it's it's an ongoing cycle but i would say the key the key the key words are transparency and um, and empathy yeah definitely that makes a lot of sense if that's part of your like company culture it's cool that you are acting out in the process you need you need to to embrace what the culture means i, I we, we tend to go away from that culture um, stigma it's it's more, more about the dna what is our dna in, inside of the company um and we you you need to transmit that uh, we don't teach anyone to be kind or to be excellence we need to be very good on find that which is something different. that's a common mistake that companies do especially on the corporate world that you you need to taught someone to be excellent you need to teach someone to be kind no. you need to find people that already uh, have those those qualities and maybe you can explore them fine but uh, it's part of your job as a manager to spot that talent. Yeah, for sure. And that's not easy. That only comes with, with experience, of course. I think, I think it would be very difficult to, to teach someone to be kind or really hard yep. work. Sometimes that's, that's just hinge who you are. So you have to select for that. Yeah. And by all means, all, all the values that we have, we didn't invent the wheel, right? Those are common sense values like transparency and excellency and kindness should be what we are as human beings on, on our day-to-day -day basis. We just um, transport those values to our company DNA and try to to be those those vessels as managers. I think that's our our mission here, and we need to do it every single day, not only on the interviews. Uh, and that's a common mistake. And a, a tip you asked me about tips. There's a tip that we should avoid to do. It's when the recruiter or, or the manager puts the poker face to and sells the company uh, as something that the company is not. Yeah. And that and that can be can be a bad experience. So. And another tip, remember that you are being interviewed as well. So the candidate is interviewing the recruiter and vice versa. Do you want to be completely open and transparent with them, but also remember that you're being interviewed? Find a balance. Of course. And, and now, in, in, in nowadays with competition, uh, especially on these on these kinds of startups with SaaS or more tech savvy products, there's a lot of offer. So if normally you are on the range of the recruitment process, probably nine of 10 candidates have proposals in other companies. So they are probably it's their fourth, fifth interview on that week. So you need to be aware of that, that they are interviewing your CEO as well. Yeah. And they compare conditions, salary bands, the way that we look at, at work. So we, we are a 100% remote async company that all of the candidates without no discussion ask is how it is to work in a remote company and how do you describe me a normal day at remote? Because we have a lot of, a, a good chunk of candidates that never work remotely or async. So for them, it's the first time. That's one of the most important things. It's to relate to them and explain that working remotely is completely different. You need to have that set of skills, good time management, to be independent, a quick learner, a team player. Uh, be very keen on documentation uh, because we rely 110% on documentation. If it's not documented, it does not exist. And those tips are super important for the first one, two, three weeks of onboarding. Um, and we are very keen to to um, to provide that to our new employees. And that's part of the interview process to explain all of that. That's obviously part of what I wanted to ask you as well is how do you onboard so many people and have a remote company and bring them into the culture and make sure they are engaging with their teammates and stuff like that and stuff. Yeah, we, we are improving. If I look back and look uh, four months ago when I started and now, there are two completely different remote onboarding experience, which is fantastic. So we can actually see the improvements. So now <clears throat> they will have an onboarding package um, that the first week is more related with remote. The second and third weeks will be more related with uh, the job functions. They, they're going to always have a buddy from first from day one. So someone inside of the team or outside that will follow up with, with them every, every week or every day on a sync. And uh, we implemented the, a trainer, a dedicated trainer for the team which was something that we didn't have before. Um, and then it will, it will become full, full circle when we already have the team lead position 
where they have a, a point of contact, a point of escalation. Um, and we are keen to make sure that they know who is who inside of the company, who they want to, to speak with, to have a coffee chat. I make sure that I follow up on the first week to know uh, if everything is, is, is okay, if they need something. We are open from the CEO to the individual contributors to have a, a call with the new employees. Actually, Marcel is one of the co-founders and the is the other co-founder and CEO of Remote. Uh, they book with every single employee a session on the first week. Nice. So that's that's very cool. It's the first company where I saw that, that happens, and that brings that sense of belonging. Um, last but not least, on the on the first month on the cycle, we do we do a recap and see what things can be improved um, and what can can we do to help them. And the communication it's completely transparent. It's all about communication and get and get the ball rolling. Yeah. Of course, it's still a startup. Everything happens on a super fast pace. But then again, back to the interview. That's why I am very keen to explain that since the first uh, minutes of the interview that, you know what, you're going to be onboarded if, if we move forward with the process. Those are the challenges yeah. um, and um, everything is clear from day one. I would say that the onboarding on a startup like this, it's something could be, you can be here for one year and you're still being onboarded because things happen so fast and change so fast that it's good that you, that we, we gave them a solid, a solid platform that even if they, they don't know, something they will know which person they they need to uh, ask help for and last but not least we need to focus 100 or rely 100 percent on uh, on documentation that's that's very key um what we are moving the ship is um we are combining that need for the documentation and having a robust knowledge base to have that human factor. So always someone more closer to the new remokies, as we call them, and that improves the, the onboarding experience. So you have like an internal knowledge base. Yes. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. We use we we use Notion for that, and now we are implementing shortly but surely Zendesk, and then probably we'll we will migrate uh, a good chunk of that information to to the internal knowledge base and get that uh, available to our customers as well so uh, help center well wait so you, you would have zendesk for internal communications or both both we will have our internal knowledge base that will be connected with the incident management uh, workflow and the help center where the customers can actually uh, work with self self-service and answer those questions through a bot and we're going to implement chat as well because that, that sort of stuff is really key to just giving your team a bit more headspace as you scale i guess yeah it, it's one of the biggest uh divert strategies to to reduce the volume it's to actually provide your customers with self-service we are not there yet but we are building it um, and in terms of coverage, in terms of service, it's perfect for the kind of uh, product that we have right now. It needs, needs to be done. But then again, it's it's all all happen at the same time. So again, very exciting. We've always got a plan for the for the future. And we're talking to Loom, like the, the video product. Yeah. And they, they were telling us, like, you always have to plan for 10 times more growth than you think you're going to have. Just because you catch up with yourself so quickly. Special, especially on customer experience. Um, I, I mean, there's no... There's no, in, in some cases that can happen, but normally there's no such thing as uh, over hiring because there's so many things that you can do. Even if you don't have volume, you can provide and use that space and that extra red count to do, to do something else. And you're already creating a lot of new roles like incident manager, program management, um, CX operation. Um, that internal will be reporting data analytics, things that we didn't have before. And we, we're going to implement those uh, to work internally and to provide a better service to our customers. So it's, it's not everything about volume. It's, it's about uh, the customer experience, the customer journey, and what we actually want to be. So what we want to transform our customer experience, it's actually the, the key differentiator factor between us and our competition. It's going to be sex, hopefully. Yeah. Or they will, or they will fire me. Either way, it it will be fine. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully yeah, not. I think it, it's so important. If you get a, a new product, the experience in the end is is what stops you churning. As long as there's someone there to listen to your complaints, you're okay there. Even if you have a product issue. I'm not that old, but I'm I'm old enough to <laughs> to remember the old days where um, IVR was the next big thing and the new Formula One, and people will lost three thousand jobs in local call centers and etc. A complete disaster. People hated IVRs, and that was the beginning of the downfall of of telephones and 
telephone centers and customers customer service centers and and those those acronyms and they will they will slowly die out uh i think in, in a couple of years that's where i see that that coming um but people will always have to have that contact even if it's by email or chat it's key to have someone on the other side of the line that's mm-hmm. that's that's undeniable we see nowadays and i work on a startup before where 95 percent of the volume was uh only chat but the fact that you you are actually it was not a bot it was actually someone doing the support and and um and the coverage the, the experience is it's fantastic and 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 people do not want to speak with machines using other channels like chat and email yes but things like ivr and, and phone are completely are completely gone um basically because we've been scarred by terrible systems but if someone could make it work maybe maybe there's 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 a business opportunity there but people will not go back to those awful experience on the phone waiting for 35 minutes listening to this terrible music that will make you even more nervous at the end of the call you need to to fill in a survey of 25 minutes it's mind-blowing so. yeah no that's what covid covid has become the new excuse hasn't it really it's like oh i'm sorry we don't have any agents because of covid it is it, it is become it's in in a way it, it forced some people to arrive to the 21st century i see that as a positive sign as i work in different industries but most of it uh, on on it and that's why i had a job people don't know to use computers people know how to press buttons and that's why we had a job at the time um and that's still that's still the reality i mean that's still the reality and we 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 need to understand that and how we will position ourselves as as a customer experience team that's that's the challenge too we will be the branch of remote of our of our values of our culture but as well we need to keep in mind that we are providing a service at the end of the day um and that it's very interesting to to see the evolution on the last 15 years to now and that's where we are right now self service will be it's already the the present but it will be probably the future yeah makes sense yep and and if you rely on technology technology will break someday and and you need to have some always some someone on the other end to make sure that things are up and running to keep the lights on as we said i think it's important if people are only so willing to look in self service like i i will try to help myself but after 5 minutes i can't find it please have a button there that says talk to me that's that's very important it gives you that uh, reassurance that you know what they're there for me and we see a lot of complaints for example recently uber eats just removed the chat and the whatsapp uh, option yeah. and they received a lot of complaints why did they do that uh, um probably they will not they were not able to scale with all the complaints and and volume it is if if you have for example uh, an uber eats at the scoot you cannot call uber eats you need to call the the restaurant or vice versa so it's it's a mess so we are going back to the phone again and there you go i mean i we i use delivery a lot here um which is just like the kind of competitor in 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 uk i i often i could probably complain every one in four times the food is cold the wrong food oh. so if you, if you remove if you remove the option then yeah yeah i don't i don't know why they do it but i i guess i guess it was volume costs all costs <laughs> yep definitely definitely now with the, the pandemic they don't have any complaints they their volumes went to the roof yeah i guess so yeah final final question i wanted to talk to you about and we already touched on culture and how like onboarding is a great way to get culture and and that kind of thing um i guess yeah employee retention is sort of the the end of this um like hiring onboarding retention what do you think is key in a remote environment especially to to keep employees retained and happy well going back to to the beginning it all starts on the interview the, on the interview process and and make sure that the onboarding is flawless and we provide uh the new employees with the very good experience and we need to have a sense of the, the human resource so the the human factor in, in companies it's not only uh, a cliche they will talk with their families they will talk with their friends they will talk with everyone on their network and they at the end of the day our employees are our biggest brand they represent the company outside when they go to a restaurant when they go to a movie when they go to a theater there is a remote person right there um and they will they will spread the message and they will in a way in water our values and spread that way of thinking and one of the key or one of the mistakes of management that i saw in my years of experience is to think that people do not speak with each other and overlook that those messages 
listen to your teams, make sure that you are open for them when they want to speak with you. When someone is leaving you a termination letter, it means that they are already thinking for two or three months on leaving. They didn't have the decision on that day or in that hour. So make sure that you are there for the interviewing process. Make sure that you are there for the onboarding process. Make sure that you follow the, the process of growth of that, of that specific per person. Implement a personal development. Be very clear about the salary bands. Do quality checks about their performance, about the KPIs, about the targets. Explain everything top down when you have a breach or a management meeting, what's going on and to a certain extent, what are the projects new products for the company. Make sure that the person is part of the journey. Make sure that the person will be the journey. Don't forget that without them, and I, I said that this to my teams, all of the teams I managed so far, hey guys, if you don't show up on Monday, I don't have a job too. So the only reason why managers are managers, it's because they have someone to manage. And that's very important. For me, it's the most important message. I, I don't exist without them, uh, but they do exist without me. So it's, it's to have that sense of your own mortality and that you are here to help them. And here at Remote, we use hierarchy, hierarchy to, to structure and to guide people and not to boss people around. And that's very important. And that's, and that's why I love to work here. You use hierarchy and structure to manage people, not boss people around. Yeah. 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 That's, that, that's very important. It's sometimes ingrained in some companies. Titles mean something. For us, titles don't mean that much. If at the end of the day, you lose four or five people a month, and then you're going to put pressure on the recruitment effort, on the recruitment team, and the most, uh, the highest cost on the company, as you know, is people. So how does that work? It's very dynamic. I'm, I, I, I'm a fan of that of segmenting uh, the team with specific tasks or specific roles, so they don't have projects. Because projects on the long run, your normal day to day will get a, it, it will get in the way. Mm -hmm. So if you have room, if you have space, and if you have the money at the end of the day, um, try to do that. And by doing that, you are passing this message of trust, and at the same time, you are promoting someone to a new role, and that that person will stay because uh, you are you are there for them. You follow that PVP. If you have more that more structure mentality, some companies do, some companies don't. But at the day, they will remember, you know what? I started here for six months and I'm very good at report and analytics. And six months after, I'm, I'm the report and analytics manager. So they see, they see the growth. They look back and they see the growth. And that's very important. And, and one of the most key retention factors, it's to have a path, an objective, a, tar a target, but to see something happen with your career. So career progression, it's very important. Yeah, definitely. I've yeah, experienced that, of course, firsthand. Yes. Yeah. We all did, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You sort of know, don't you? It's a good thing to remember. Like, what is it like to be an employee? And I, I won't make the experience like that for my team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's and that's and that's key. I've, I've been there on the battlefield. I, I started as a, as a custom service um, team member on, on, on UPS. And I, I work my ranks up until until the management position. But I know exactly what is to be in the mix. The pains that I felt, the frustration that I felt, not having a decent manager to escalate things. And, and I promise myself that I will never be like that again. So I yeah. think I learned not to be like that. And I tried not to forget every single day that they are the reason why I'm here and not the other way around. And some managers tend to to forget. Yeah, staying humble with your team. Staying, staying very humble. And I'm not, I'm not saying falsely humble real humble like and and they they can smell it a mile away it will not last it will not last definitely yeah for sure well thank you so much i think this has been really insightful and going to be very useful for anyone hiring people at the moment so thank you thank you i hope so thank you so much for having me